Oh, it's time. Time to get radical. Your discretion is advised. Welcome to Radical Comp of the Week for June the 14th through June the 20th, 2021. These are the very best comments from that time period. Starting out with the honorable mentions, we got Sneaky V, Juliet Juliet India Mobile, and Art Bell. The bronze medal comes to us from Arioka. Griffin Gaming gave $50 of his join donated money to Review Tech USA, probably to get some of Rich's viewers to check out his channel. But why not just give a buck instead for a super chat? Shout out is beyond me. If every content creator who received donations showed proof of how they're spending the money given to improve their channels, and also if the money people invested on them had some financial return after time, as in the stock market, or received a tangible product in return, as in exchanging money for purchasing goods, that would be a fair deal on both for both creators and viewers who pay for a membership. As is, Patreon is currently used by YouTubers like a charity, and that's just unethical. Any content creator on YouTube who is unable to sustain their channel via views, viewer interactions, ad revenue, and or even corporate sponsorships alone should make videos as a side hobby and have a real full-time job to pay for all their expenses and not ask for subscribers to do that for them. It's a matter of principle and is morally wrong to ask viewers to pay for their personal bills. Yeah, it's paying for their personal bills. We recently talked about uh, people paying for their NASCARs and their pursuits outside of YouTube. But uh, look at it this way. As in the donation of Griffin Gaming of $50 to Review Tech USA, uh, it's very stupid, and you bring up a good point, how he could have donated $1. I think that's the minimum. He could, he could have donated $1 if it was about just kind of getting his name out there. But we're talking $1 times 50 $50. And we don't let this motherfucker off the hook. I'm not letting this motherfucker off the hook. I, I mean, why should we? Of all the things to spend money on, I, I can't believe, and I can't believe that upload even got any uh, downvotes. I can't even believe it. I cannot fathom the fact. I mean, give me Griffin Gaming's biggest defender right now. Put him right here. Come on. Come on down. Griffin Gaming's biggest defender. Sit here. And try to explain to me how your guy, who once criticized Review Tech USA, and there's a lot of things to criticize for good reason, years ago, is now handing him $50. What's the best thing they're going to say? Probably. Well, I mean, it's not even his money, you know, it's other people's money. Oh, okay. Oh, so it's the other people's money donating to him, right? Well, then, then, wait a second. Then... You got to admit that if you're Griffin Gaming, you're taking those donations. Supposedly, that should be helping you and your channel, and you're helping other channels. You're helping Review Tech USA. So maybe Griffin Gaming should update on his Patreon. I'm going to take your money and give it to Review Tech USA. Thank you, Arioka. Moving on to the silver medal. Silver medal comes to us from Martyville. Rick, the first fight against the first non-filler and non-movie rehash major villain fight in Bruto has been animated. It's with Naruto and Sasuke fighting the boss of the last antagonist of Naruto. If you want to watch a fight, you can look up Naruto and Sasuke versus Jigen. If for uh, some context, they are fighting in another dimension because the antagonist teleported Naruto away to avoid getting into a fight, but forced the fight at the end with Sasuke, who can also move through dimensions, appeared. And if you think this fight was worth waiting for 204 episodes in your opinion. Obviously, you can't ever, you can't know every ability these characters are supposed to have since that requires watching too many episodes of Naruto, even if it's just from one story arc. Unless there is some death battle video uh, compilating all those things into a compact, sizable amount to consume. In terms of power, it's hard to tell how strong the antagonist is, but since he is using a human body as a host, and it can't handle his full strength, so many who read the manga version really hated that fight from what I read back then, which may or may not surprise you. Well, not anything really, not much of anything surprises me, you know, in the world, really. I mean, I've heard a lot when it comes to fans uh, disliking or hating, you know, translations from manga to the television version, the anime. I mean, I get that. I understand that, especially if it's a lot different. Uh, I can only judge it from the 16 minutes that I watched. I barely watched any Bruto. 
I've seen a sizable bit of Naruto. Like I said before, I like a lot of Naruto. I like a lot of the fights, especially with Rock Lee and the Sand Guy. There's some really legendary fights. So I, I think when it comes to anime, the original Naruto series has some of the best fights and some of the inter- most interesting characters. Now you take two of the heavy hitters, Sasuke and Naruto, put them together, and you have them take on the big bad. I've never seen this guy, but you said that he's not as strong as he was showing there. He's using a human form. Seem pretty damn strong to me, you know. To I don't want to summarize the whole fight, and uh, I mean, you know, I can a little bit because it's not the end of the fight. Uh, basically, it's a continuation because they fight this guy Sasuke and Naruto, and there's some really nice animation, some really nice 3D animation going around like the battlefield. Really good stuff. Really good stuff. I still don't like the art style, but I'm not going to be specific. Uh, I'm not going to be really critical because overall. The animation was good, especially when they turn into their bigger parts. Naruto turns into the big uh, nine-tailed whatever it is, and then Sasuke turns into the big knight, the Susano, and that was a really smooth transition into that you know, animated bit also. That villain, he basically, he throws bars at them, and the bars go throughout. I mean, that's a pretty brutal ability. He kept going through their arms and their legs with the bars, and I'm like, man, they just seem like it was a mild annoyance. I mean, geez, like if, if bars are going through my arms and legs, I'm like, damn, motherfucker, damn it, quit that shit. But they kept doing that. And then Naruto gets uh, sealed into what looks like a huge ramen bowl. Crazy stuff, crazy stuff. I mean, I enjoy the 16 minutes, so I will say that a lot better than that uh, fight against Delta. Uh, do I think it's worth Watching 204 episodes to get to? Uh, hell no. No. Not Boruto. You know, not even really probably Naruto to get that specific fight. No. So I'm not going to watch 200 episodes of an inferior version of Naruto to get to that fight specifically. Okay? No. But for what it is, you know, a 15, 16 minute watch on a random YouTube channel that re-uploaded it, uh, sure. I think it's worth 15, 16 minutes to watch. Thank you, Martyville. Now moving on to the shiny, shiny gold medal, we got Juliet, Juliet, India Mobile. This is just a classic example of someone using their celebrity to push their business. I have no doubt that Tommy Tellerico fully believes in the Amico and is blinded about what it truly is. However, he fails hard at launching his product because he's heavily leveraging his portfolio to sell the Amico versus his actual product itself. It's a classic, I don't care what anyone thinks or what's actually possible, I just want it done, mentality. I'm sure a few folks have gotten to him, and that's why he's mentioning things like physical games, but in his vision of the Amico, he can't see it working. Possibly, someone has explained to Tommy how it could work, but he doesn't fully understand it. Again, since he is leveraging his celebrity so much, we know that he's not a hardware developer. Someone else is responsible for taking his brain diarrhea and turning it into the Amico. I'm confident that he took near no time to actually look into all the facets of creating a console and having it hit store shelves. I'm confident that he knew enough people willing to help him, so he took that route, and that's why we're here today. I won't be buying an Amico because of this, and that crappy mobile game can be played. The crappy, crappy mobile games can be played on my phone without the lag. But damn those sweet RGB lights, right? Sometimes people have that mindset that they just want something. They want something to happen, but they don't know how to nurture it and make it a reality. You know, I see it with a lot of people that they say, I don't care. I just want me a hot girl. Okay, I'm tired of having these like low rate, giant, chunky girls that look like Review Tech USA in a wig. I just want a hot chick for once. I want a hot girl. But then it happens. They snag them a hot girl, and it doesn't last a week because they have no idea what it takes to maintain that. Even if it's like a just a part-time casual relationship, you know, they have no idea what it takes to maintain and nurture that. I have no faith in the Intellivision Amico whatsoever. I have no faith. Why? Why should I have faith in the Amico? Because of Tommy Tellerico? Does Tommy Tellerico have a great track record of hardware development? Does he have a great track record of bringing a console to market? You no, know, no, he does not. 
and talking about the celebrity. Oh, the celebrity of Tommy Tellerico. Let me let me pop this guy's ego bubble real quick here. Okay, uh, I could. Anyone can do this. Go out into the world and ask a hundred people what they think of Tommy Tellerico or the Intellivision Amico. I just asked somebody and they thought, what? What's a, what's an Amico? Most people will look at you confused. But if you ask them what a mobile phone game is, they'll say, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you show them footage from an Amico, the conference, they'll look at it and say like, oh, okay, that's a mobile phone game. That's a problem. You're releasing a console in 2021 or 2022 or whenever it comes out. Have an Amico delay. There might be another delay. You know, the, the delays too also, they show me no confidence. No confidence whatsoever. Oh, the chip shortage. Uh-huh, right? Like, that's the only only reason behind it. I have no faith. I have zero faith in the Intellivision Amico. Why should we have faith? Because of Tommy Tellerico, right? Because of his celebrity? It is truly pathetic that he's trying to use his celebrity to push this product, right? See, if I was him, I would probably just, like, I've, I would have had Aerosmith. Have freaking Aerosmith. It's just a call away? You know, Steven Tyler was probably like, no, no, I'm going to I'm going to run DMC away from this steaming crap.